Turn your smartphone into 4K video recorder plus on-camera monitor. Axon Seymour 4K. Let's hear you that. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. I'm sure a lot of you guys do know Axon Seymour, the first generation uh, device, let me say, but we have a better and newer device right here. It's a brand new device, by the way. So here we can have a 4K up to 30p signal got into your smartphone and you can record this 4K signal as well. Unfortunately, you cannot feed 4K 50 or 60 FPS, but still 4K 25 or 30p is great. So let's have a look at this device, what we have here, what's new, what's not. So here we go. And guys, what you get in this white box. So first of all, you have two cables. One is lighting to USB Type-C and the other one is USB Type-C to USB Type-C. Those are proprietary cables by Axon. You do not need to uh, basically lose those. It's a proprietary cable. It won't work with any cable. So here we have the iPhone 15 Pro Max and it does charge via the NPF battery on the back and via this cable. But the Lightning iPhones will not charge simultaneously because of the limitations of the Lightning port, I guess. I'm not really sure. So also here on the body of the device itself, we have a cold shoe mount. It's made out of plastic, but if you'll be careful enough, you won't have any issues with that. So a cold shoe mount right here. We also have an SD card slot for a big SD card the standard one and you can use it as a card reader to basically transfer footage from your iPhone to this SD card and it is pretty nice you cannot actually record onto this SD card but as a card reader why not you simply go into the files app and use it as a card reader as I said we also have the 5 volt output if you want to charge some other devices like the Sony ZV E1 with a cooling fan if you want to charge the fan simultaneously from this NPF battery it's a nice solution so you won't have any overheating and also guys right here we have the hdmi the big one um, it's a in hdmi in and you get the signal from your camera to this device you can also separate the phone holder and the exon simo 4k itself and you can also use it with the dji raven eye system kind of a you know the same base plate as the raven eye system uses or you can purchase a separate cage for an ipad and use it with the ipad as a monitor as a display also in the kit we get a pretty nice tilting mount with really nice system in terms of uh, you know tightening this mount right here and guys here are two images side by side one is shot in camera to an sd card and the other one is shot with the axon simo 4k into the iphone and as you can tell guys the difference is not that huge of course the bitrate is not that dramatic on the iphone footage and if you are trying to push and pull the image to color grade it a ton, you will have worse results than with the built-in codec. Of course, it's an 8-bit video, but if you're setting the signal in log format with the light applied from the camera, like from the FX30 or ZVE one, or if you're using a contrasty profile like as Cinetone or PPOF, you'll have pretty nice backup. Or you can simply put on the uh, image HDMI display info onto the iPhone or onto the Simo 4K, let me say, and you can give your viewer understanding of what your camera says in terms of settings, autofocus points, and so on. And now let's have a quick overview of the functions. They are pretty simple and most of those functions came from the first generation, but still, if you want to see those, here we go. So here we have the black and white functionality, a color functionality, also the histogram, which you can move throughout the whole entire screen. The same applies to the RGB parade, the same applies to the vectorscope. Here we have the focus peaking, and if you want to change the settings of this particular tool, you go to the top right corner, you hit the sign of the gear icon, and here you can change the different settings for different tools. For instance, we can go into vectorscope and make it a big one. So as you can see here, we have a big one or a small one. The focus, we can make it a green, blue, and change the density or the picking level. We can have multiple um, tools on the screen. So here we have the LUTs. I don't use the LUTs right here. I use the LUTs in camera. That is why I'm not really bothering showing you uh, the LUTs section. Also here we have the zebras and we can adjust the levels of the zebras right here. So we can adjust it to be less than 83% like so. Then we have the false color tool with all of the uh, IRE values on the left, which is nice. So here we have the audio levels. Here we have the different aspect ratios. 
And here we have the anamorphic disk quiz and the grids also customizable. Here is the HDR mode, so you can dial in the HDR mode if you are looking at an HDR image. Here is the flip mode and here we have a still overlay so you can kind of overlay two images if you shot one shot and you want to make exactly the same shot but i don't know at night you can use this one so also right here we have the recording button right here then you can see the remaining time and also the remaining storage of your iphone so let's turn it off. Here we have the live button, so you can live stream from this device. I didn't test it, but as far as I know, it works okay. It depends really on the internet connection. So here we have the Frame.io and the uploading to a cloud service. I also don't use those, so I cannot really tell if it does properly work. And here in the bottom right corner, we have different settings like the transmission bitrate of 20 megabits per second. This is for the live stream, as far as I understand, the file record limit. And here we have uh, different settings and tools that you can add to the top bar or you can remove from the top bar by, you know, doing like so. So that's basically it, guys, in terms of the functionality. It does have everything I ever need from an on-camera monitor. You have to be a bit careful with the display dimming. If your phone gets really hot because it's charging, uh, charging simultaneously, you can have display dimming issues, especially on a sunny day if the sun just, you know, smokes your phone. So in this regard, the big on-camera monitor, like 1000 nit monitor that I'm looking at right now will be a better solution because it doesn't dim iPhones and smartphones on Android do have this dimming uh, feature because they need to cool down. But all in all, as a pretty big and nice and bright and juicy OLED monitor, this is awesome to have because it's very compact. You only need to bring an MPF battery and this plastic construction mini holder and your phone is always with you. And now you can record 4K and you can also use it as a card reader and have extra juicy battery uh, to some other devices, which is great. So in my opinion, guys, this is an awesome product for the price. The price is right here or right here, somewhere there. And I think it is a better solution than a cheap and not really mm, good quality on-camera monitor because your iPhone or your Galaxy S24 Ultra, whatever, Pixel 8 Pro is a better display than a cheap and uh, the same price kind of on-camera monitor. That's my opinion, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Please let me know which monitor you use and have you tried the Axon CMO, the first generation. And if you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. And right here, I have a full playlist of monitor reviews for you to watch next. Thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Bye.